Welcome to this video. I'd like to go over how to use uh, PTC Creo if you are a SolidWorks user, particularly in this video for a sketching environment. Uh, P Creo really is a different thought process than SolidWorks in a few ways, and that can come across different enough that it would appear quite foreign to some SOLIDWORKS users. So I'd like to make a sketch that would generate this flange that we have here on screen. And to do that, I'll simply uh, specify File, New, and Part, and Solid is fine. And from here, uh, this is the general you know, work part interface that you have. And I can simply choose Sketch to create a sketch. And here are my three planes, much like in SOLIDWORKS. I choose a plane, and I reconfirm Sketch on this menu. Uh, now I need to get normal to my view, and the easiest way to do that is simply using the sketch view. This upper toolbar right here, if I hover over, gives me the sketch view and automatically makes me normal. So now I can begin uh, looking at the sketch tools. This also is very much like SOLIDWORKS. I have line, rectangle, circle, arc, ellipse, spline, and then you can add in a sketch fillet. This has a sketch chamfer, which I thought was a nice touch, and you can offset and uh, thicken things. Um, the offset is a lot like SOLIDWORKS as well. So to generate this flange, I want to draw a circle. And so I draw a circle, and uh, just like in SOLIDWORKS, I stay in my circle drawing tool, but I can exit it. Um, and notice one major difference is Creo gives me a dimension already. And of course, I can drag this to whatever dimension I want to. And notice this dimension is blue, or I can double click and specify a certain dimension. I'll go with the dimension of 5. You'll, know, you'll notice the scaling is a little bit different in Creo as well. So now that I have a dimension of 5, when I click off of it, you'll see it's a different color. It's not blue. And we as SOLIDWORKS users are inclined to think, okay, got it, yes, that's my constrained circle. But Creo is a little bit different. I can still drag this around and it doesn't lock like SOLIDWORKS does. So that's one thing to be careful of. And it's one thing that, at least when I was learning Creo, gave me a lot of frustration because I would set a dimension and then it would drag somewhere else. So one of the big paradigm shifts when you learn Creo in sketching if you're a SOLIDWORKS user is you do not click and drag. Um, if you're in the habit of clicking and dragging, you always have the option of coming up and uh, hitting this little lock button if my mouse will stop moving around. And uh, that allows me that no matter what I do, I cannot change or alter this dimension at all. Even down here it says geometry is constrained and cannot be dynamically moved. But you'll see that if you think differently about using Creo, it will not be necessary to lock out these dimensions despite them changing when you click and drag. Allow me to explain. When I um, click on this dimension, or rather when I um, hover over it, if my mouse will hold still for long enough, you'll see in parentheses it says strong, a strong dimension. That means that when I apply other features, other features will not change this dimension, only my mouse clicking and dragging will. So if I go to add some more features, I'm going to add in another circle. This will be my bolt circle that will define my bolt circle diameter. And uh, notice I want to use construction geometry. So I can click on construction mode, which makes all these tools generate construction geometry. Or if I have something existing in driving geometry, I can simply click this for construction button and it goes into for construction. Uh, and notice it gives me again the dimension that I need to fully constrain. So let's give this dimension of say, I already have five. So let's make my driving geometry three. Okay. So now again, I have two strong dimensions. So stay with me, I want to add in three more circles. These will be my bolt holes on the flange. And you'll notice if I come close enough, I have an automatic relation for horizontal, much like in SOLIDWORKS. So I want to add a horizontal constraint between these two circles. All I want to do is click on my horizontal button up here from the toolbar, click on one circle, click on the other circle, and they are horizontal. Likewise, I can do a vertical relation between the center of this circle and the origin. So the relations apply a lot like in SOLIDWORKS. The, one of the key differences is you when you click on a constraint, it unselects everything, so you have to select everything the minute you click on something. So when I click, uh, for example, even if I exit the equal here, 
I click on this circle and I want to make it equal with this circle. So if I hit the equal button, it deselects this circle immediately. So I have to reselect everything that I want to make equal. But then I stay in the tool and so I can uh, reapply that constraint uh, however I want to. It looks like I'm over constrained there. So let's see uh, what's going on here. Yeah, so this is probably a good point too. When you're in the Creo sketch environment, it tells you all of the constraints that you have and you have the option of undoing one. And when you click on the option of undoing one, you can see where you're equal. So it looks like I'm simply adding two equal constraints. And so I can simply say undo. Okay, so now I want to establish an angle. And uh, you've seen how you can um, click on driving geometry and make it for construction. Likewise, you can click on for construction geometry and make it driving. Oh, but I hit the wrong button there. So undo, click on this geometry and make it driving, just like that. So that's how you switch between uh, the two options. You can also click on construction mode. And now whatever line I draw will be a construction line. So I'll draw it here. And like SolidWorks Creo defaults to a polyline. So I'll exit my tool, and uh, now I want to add a dimension that isn't there. Up until now, uh, Creo has given me the dimensions that I've wanted to, to have. But now I have to add a dimension that's not there by default. Uh, this, indeed, if, if this was strong and this was strong, they, we would have a fully defined sketch. But since I want to define it another way, I click on this dimension. And when I click on this construction line, notice nothing happens. I think the line might turn green, but nothing else happens. Don't panic. Um, I'll click on this other construction line that I've made. Again, nothing happens. Now to actually place the dimension, I click on the third mouse button wheel, the same button that you use to uh, 3D rotate your view. When I click on that, the dimension comes right in. And I'll set that to be 120 degrees. This works exactly as Smart Dimension does in SolidWorks, so don't be intimidated by it. Now. Um, everything is a strong dimension except for this here. Now I know that I have the equal relation between these bolt circles because they uh, only have one dimension here driving all three. So if I say I want these to be one inch, all three uh, size in one inch. Now you'll notice I have no weak dimensions. That means that we are indeed constrained in the sketch. So if I add in a line, oh, and I've added in a construction line, so I can hurry and switch that to driving, and I can take off construction mode up here. Notice I have three new dimensions, and again, these are all the dimensions required to fully constrain this line. It gives them to us right off the bat. So the difference in thinking is in SolidWorks, we're always thinking about how we're going to fully constrain. Creo does it for us and we just have to make those dimensions strong or add our own dimensions if we want to uh, redefine the way that the dimensions are defined. So that's where the, the difference in thinking lies. I do not need to click and drag because if there's a blue dimension on the map, I know I'm not fully constrained. No clicking and dragging necessary. So if I grab this endpoint, uh, actually I have to choose vertical and grab this endpoint, and make it vertical with the origin. Now I'll take another line and again select equal and our lines are both made equal. So perhaps I can hit escape and now move this to a little bit more of a convenient location. Just like in SolidWorks I can choose a th several three-point arcs and at this point, I'm going to choose a center and ends. So I define it by the center of the arc and then by the ends. This is very uh, important because notice I do not have a cocentric relation option like SolidWorks has. So if you need cocentric in Creo, you simply grab the center points of the arc or the circles and uh, make them coincident. And that is a perfectly uh, usable substitute uh, between the two. So again, I'll grab my arc center and ends, grab the center here, start off on this end and draw an arbitrary arc, do the same on this side. 
Okay, and you can see the blue dimensions are telling me everything that is not constrained, so it makes it quite easy. I'm going to start by making these arcs equal. Oh, but I don't actually need to because I've made these lines equal, so we won't over constrain. Instead, I'll choose the tangent option and make each arc tangent to its corresponding line, which I don't even have to do on this side because, again, of those uh, relations. So if we undo that, um, I can set these arcs to have a radius, let's say, of one inch. Now I can choose another arc, center and ends, and I can choose a line, and you're st probably starting to get a hang of the mentality that um, we don't need to check what is constrained. Creo just puts it right in front of us as blue dimensions. And uh, we can proceed through the sketching environment um, and not have to worry because our strong dimensions don't change. Okay, so now that uh, this has a blue dimension here, so even though that this is reading radius of 1 and this is reading radius of 1, I know that that is a weak dimension. So I'll choose equal and uh, make sure that this arc is the same. Okay, now I only have this weak dimension and this weak dimension, and so it appears I only need to fully define those dimensions by adding a tangent constraint. So grab tangent, and we have no more uh, weak dimensions at all. So that is the mentality behind fully defining sketches in Creo. All you have to do is look for those blue, weak dimensions, and that tells you where everything is unconstrained. And you can simply add your own dimensions, make them strong, or add relations, and the sketch will fully define. And uh, you don't have to worry about uh, clicking and dragging uh, like SolidWorks makes it so easy to do. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. Let's go ahead and give this an extrude. For the heck of it, uh, let's say we want this to be 0.375 inches, and we'll go with a, um, that's extrude from the midpoint, or extrude both sides, half the dimension each side, and we have a flange. Uh, again, please subscribe if this is helpful, that's the best way to help me back, and I'll see you in the next video.